Hey guys, I'm here in my favorite and only recliner, ready to talk about the new movie I saw last night called Glass. Bruce Willis's David Dunn from Unbreakable is tracking down James McAvoy's The Horde. Uh, at the end of Split, he got out. He's running amok in the city. David Dunn's going to go track him down and apprehend him. And that's basically where we pick up here. And, yeah, that happens for the, for a while. They end up in an in, insane asylum uh, where they meet up with Mr. Glass, also from Unbreakable, of course. Um, and that's kind of where the movie sits for the most part. And I'm going to avoid spoilers with this review, of course, because there's a lot of moving parts that, to give one little thing away, you could extrapolate the whole plot. Uh, so we'll stay pretty vague for this review. As I mentioned, a lot of hype around this movie for a few reasons. One, another Shyamalan movie. And that wasn't something to be excited about a few years back, but he's kind of in an upswing. I think people are really curious about what he's doing next because he's had some hits the last couple years our last couple films, uh, and I was one of those people. I was excited to see the next Shyamalan movie. But also because it's a, a sequel to Split, which I liked a lot, and also, and most importantly, the third film in a franchise no one even knew Shyamalan was building, starting with Unbreakable 18 years ago. We finally get to round out the trilogy that no one knew they wanted and everyone wanted. And then, of course, the trailers were really good. Um, so I've, I was really excited about this movie. So with all of this hype on it, did I like it? Yeah, I did. And I know that's kind of an uncommon uh, opinion on this movie, uh, at least from what I've been reading. Um, it's a very divisive film uh, to casual fans, to diehard fans, and I understand it completely, but um, this is one of those times where I'm actually glad I looked up reviews for the movie before I saw it. Uh, I know a lot of people like to go in as dark as possible, and I applaud them for that. I wish I had the strength to not look up all the trailers and the reviews. But that's my curse. I, I can't help it. I gotta see how people are feeling about things before I see them. And I do regret it sometimes when I see big movies on the screen and I kind of get, I know the vibes to expect. And I'm like, ah, oh, I wish I had been surprised by that and not read the reviews or whatever. This movie, I'm, it's movies like this, the divisive ones, I'm glad I look at the reviews before. I can kind of temper my expectations. Because if I had gone into this movie with the overwhelming heap of hype I had for it, I would have been supremely disappointed like a lot of people are online, um, apparently. But knowing that, that it's not um, universally loved was a good thing for me to know, I think. Because uh, I could kind of hold back when things happen, certain things happen in the movie that make you go, ah! It kind of let me take a breath and say, okay, let's just, let's just keep watching. So some specifics of what I liked, um, the performances from the three of the leads. James McAvoy, Bruce Willis, Sam Jackson, they're all great. To be honest, you know, Bruce Willis's character is not much to him. He's kind of the white bread hero character, which is fine, um, but he, he did well for what the character uh, needed. Sam Jackson, again, not a whole lot to do. He didn't really get to flex his acting chops too much, but he, was, he, he walked, stepped right back into the shoes of Mr. Glass from 18 years ago. Uh, he did a great job. Um, but everyone's been talking about it, and it's absolutely true. James McAvoy's performance as the Horde is just... It's just a great... It's just a fantastic performance. It wasn't split. It, he recaptures it perfectly in this one. Uh, just fantastic. Can't, can't throw enough praise on him for that. Just a great character. And I thought Shyamalan's direction was just superb in this movie. Uh, just like in Unbreakable and in Split... Uh, the angles, the shots, the way he lingers on shots uh, really helps sell the, the idea that these people really exist. And that's been since day one in Unbreakable. That was, the, that was the premise. Superheroes are real and they exist. And they're not wearing capes and stuff. They're real people like you and me and they have unique gifts. And this is what it would look like if they used those gifts in the real world. Uh, and the way he directs scenes, and there's a couple in the trailers um, where James McAvoy's character is lifting a police car and the camera's in the car and it just doesn't cut and you just see him straining and lifting this car over. Uh, little things like that, just, it's 
peppered throughout the movie and it just really makes you feel like it's real. And that kind of feeds into my overall positive about it that I really had to think about after the movie. It wasn't instantly clear to me, but after I thought about it, uh, I was a little, sa I was pretty satisfied with how this movie played out in terms of maintaining that feel that this is in the real world um, and to keep it kind of grounded. And Shyamalan plays with the idea too, a little bit. There's some moments in the movie where they hint at a certain climax that the movie could go with that's kind of like straight out of half or more of the Marvel movies where it ends on some some big showdown on the, the top of the tallest building or you know some crazy battle uh, it, it, it threatens that and then it undercuts it and and goes for the subversion of expectations um, as as they promised from Unbreakable all the way back 18 years ago so it stays true to the spirit that set that was set forth in Unbreakable, and I really appreciated that. Now the subversion of expectation stuff is where it gets tricky, uh, and is where, of course, a lot of people are divided. And this is kind of where I get into negatives because the subversion of expectations in terms of keeping things grounded as the antithesis to the big Marvel movies that worked for me. And as vague, I'm gonna keep it as vague as possible. But there are several twists towards the end, um, and uh, there's there's one or two that are questionable. By and large, I think the movie the movie succeeds. But there's a couple things, one in particular that I was just kind of shocked about. Um, I I won't even say describe how I felt about it, but it was a big moment, and I was kind of like out of it for a second, and then I remembered temper my expectations and kind of wrote it through and processed it for a day now and I've come to the conclusion that I like the movie but in the theater there's a twist that is 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 hard to watch but having thought about it I I think overall the everything that happens in the movie serves the purpose of this particular film and the trilogy as a whole I I got to think Shyamalan made the exact trilogy he wanted to make and you know people are divided about the conclusion, as they often are, uh, with overarching long stories, long gestating stories, um, and that's fine. You know, what can you do? You know, you're not going to please everybody. Some people hate it, some people liked it. I liked it. I mean, it, I should say, the it wasn't completely satisfying for me, the end. Um, the movie running up to it, I should mention, the first two-thirds of it, particularly the beginning, the setup to the whole action was just perfect. The The hospital stuff was a lot of talking, but it was interesting dialogue, um, I thought, more or less. Maybe some dull parts, but it served the story. Everything that was in there is essential to the story. Um, so I thought it was fine. The end, I think, it, it, it tried a lot of things, and Shyamalan's, you know, he's, he's gonna have his twists in there. He can't not have those twists. So he has them, and some work better than others. Uh, but I think overall, it got across the finish line just fine. So yeah, all in all, I'd give it a soft 8, a mid 8 out of 10. Uh, not too bad. I, I liked it more than most, I suppose. Um, yeah, I appreciate that it stuck to the, uh, the grounded framework that Unbreakable set forth. Um, I, I kind of, I really appreciated that subversion of expectations of... The third film um, in a superhero franchise is supposed to be just a huge epic thing, and it undercuts that a little bit, and I appreciate it. It's stuck to its guns. Haters be damned, you know? What, what can you do? But yeah, I liked it. So anyway, those are my thoughts on it. Um, please share your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to discuss and debate with anyone else that, that's seen it and wants to talk about it. Um, but other than that, until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.